The last time I was in California, I messed up and brought the wrong ammo for my gun. I was packing too fast and bought 10 millimeter ammo for my 45 ACP caliber Glock 30. So what did I do? What any normal person would do. I got up, ran to the nearest gun shop and bought some ammo for my gun and everything was right with the world. However, fast forward to July 1st, 2019, where if I had made the same mistake today, I'd be forced to have to throw bullets with my hands if I had to defend my life. California now requires a background check to buy ammo, at least their version of a background check. California can only use its state database and state gun registry to conduct background checks on ammo. I don't live in California, so I'm not on any of these pre-confiscation databases. This means I can no longer buy ammo in California, and neither can anyone else who doesn't live there. Now, if you live in California and you want to buy ammo, you have to pay a $1 standard eligibility check fee to the California DOJ every single time you want to buy ammo. However, if you haven't purchased a rifle or a shotgun since 2013 or a handgun before 96, this means you also aren't on California's little pre-confiscation gun registry list, and thus, they don't know what guns you own. So you know what that means? You guessed it. You now have to pay $19 for a basic eligibility check every time that you want to buy ammo. And it could take up to 10 days to be approved. And if you are approved, you only can purchase ammo once within 30 days of approval. Or you can register your guns that you're not legally required to register in the first place. So essentially, since we can't legally make you register your guns, we'll make getting bullets for your guns so expensive, you'll have no choice but to register your guns. I'm sorry, but I thought we wanted responsible gun owners in this country. Ammo was already taxed, and now you want to add another tax with this goofy eligibility check, making it harder and more expensive for law-abiding gun owners to train with their firearm. This is a penalty tax for owning a gun. Nothing more, nothing less. It won't save lives, and it's not stopping criminals from getting ammo. California easily has some of the most extreme gun control laws in the country, yet their gun homicide rate has been about the same or actually higher in some years than Texas' gun homicide rates. And Texas is known for having lax gun laws. If criminals can get their hands on guns, which are far more regulated than ammo, what makes you think that they won't be able to get their hands on ammo? For crying out loud, the governor of California used a case where a criminal shot a cop with a rifle that he built using parts that are illegal in California to justify the need for an ammo background check. He didn't buy the gun illegally or steal it, he built it. But have no fear, the ammo background check is here to do absolutely nothing. Well, except extort $13 million out of law-abiding gun owners, considering that's the annual number of ammo purchases in the state. This is a way to generate revenue for the state while making gun ownership more expensive and arduous for law-abiding gun owners, while not saving one life. This ammo background check nonsense has nothing to do with stopping criminals. It's a punishment for being a law-abiding gun owner. Being a law-abiding gun owner is hard enough. It's expensive, it's time consuming, and in some cases it's socially isolating, especially if you live in California. People, please stop voting for these stupid gun laws just because they sound good. They not only not work, they actually hurt people that they claim to protect by making it easier on a criminal to victimize good people. Right now there's a culture war against the Second Amendment, which is why I need your help spreading our message to counter their message. You can do this by leaving a comment, sharing this video, and click the bell and subscribe button. Let my voice be your voice, and let them know you want to keep America tactical. Because the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed wasn't a suggestion, it was a directive. Also, if you're wondering where to purchase your state-specific Keep America Tactical shirt, click the link under the Keep America Tactical in the description section of this video.